before we start, I just want to say congratulations to Canada's first five medalists. Winning gold in men's freestyle moguls, Alexandre Bilodeau. Winning gold in women's snowboard cross, Mael Ricker. Winning silver in women's moguls, Jennifer Heil. Winning silver in men's snowboard cross, Mike Robertson. And winning bronze in women's 3000 long track speed skating, Christina Groves. Congratulations and keep those medals coming. Now, who wants to talk hockey? Welcome to the penalty box. Since the Olympics started five days ago, the women have played in two games and the men have played in one. So, my first impressions of Team Canada? I like them. And that's the show! See you next week! Wait, you mean you actually want something more in-depth? Well, let's start with the women. In its first game, Team Canada sets an Olympic record with its 18 to nothing victory over Team Slovakia. Two days later, same story, Canada thumps Switzerland 10 to 1 earning an automatic buy into the semi-final. And these games just show how dominant Canadian women are. No one can even come close to challenging them, aside from the U.S. I mean, the Slovakian goaltender is considered one of the best women goaltenders, and she was pretty good in the first half of the first period, until the women found out that screening her was her kryptonite. But I want to stop all the silliness from people calling Team Canada classless or arrogant because they run up the score. Because that's not the case at all. Truth is, Canada needs to run up the score if they want to win gold. You see, to stay in tip-top form, Canada needs to keep playing their best. If they hold back against any of their opponents, they start getting into bad habits, making costly mistakes, and playing the type of hockey that will lose you the gold medal game against the United States. So keep on rolling, ladies. All rational Canadian fans are behind you. And moving on to the men. The Canadian men open the Olympic tournament with a bang against Norway, winning 8 to nothing. Jerome Ginla got a hat trick, and Roberto Luongo made 15 saves for the shutout. Now I'm very happy with their victory here. I know it's nothing to get too excited about, it is only Norway, but after the first period, Canada really hit their stride and started playing like a real team. Something they lacked in Torino. The Aginla Nash Crosby line looked stupendous. Marlowe, Heatley, and Thornton proved dangerous. The Getzlaff Perry combos clicking like mad. Iserman has built a beast. And Luongo looked impressive, but like I said, it's only Norway and he only faced 15 shots. Brodeur will get the call against Switzerland, but this leaves Canada with a bit of an interesting question in net. Assuming Broder gets the shutout versus Switzerland, and assuming he faces the same type of performance that Luongo faced, who do you go with? Because Olympic tournaments can be won and lost by goalies. So guys, what do you think? Do you go with the tried and true Broder, or do you go with rock solid Luongo? Leave your responses in the comments. Oh, and one more thing that annoys me. Would someone please tell the CTV ad execs that Sidney Crosby is not the captain of Team Canada? Led by superstar Sidney Crosby. Uh, no. Actually, you were three-fifths right with led by superstar. You just need to fact check for that last part. It's Scott Niedermeyer. Anyway, that's all for now, folks. Hope you're enjoying the Olympics. No matter which country you're cheering for, I'll see you in a week. And of course, go Canada, go.